So in this lecture, we are going to discuss the factors affecting the contraction and relaxation of the smooth muscles. There are basically two types of factors which affect the contraction and relaxation of the smooth muscles. In the case of skeletal muscles, most of them were basically excited or con contraction occurred due to the stimulation of the nervous system or the nervous stimulation occurred. But in case of smooth muscles, we have basic two types, nervous stimulation and non-nervous stimulation. Non-nervous, non-action potential stimulation. So the smooth muscles could be directly excited by the nervous system or the, with the help of neurons, which be basically bringing some message from the brain or spinal cord with the help of uh, nerve fibers and they may start contraction of the smooth muscles. But in, but apart from the nervous system, we have non-nervous system or non-nervous non-action potential stimulation as well. And they are still of two types. One type is known as the local tissue chemical factors and the hormones. So local factors, local factors and hormones are two non-nervous factors which cause contraction or the excitation of the smooth muscles or similarly could cause inhibition of the smooth muscles. So nervous system could excite or contract and then non-nervous non-action potential stimulation. And this non-nervous non-action potential is of two types, local tissue factors and hormones. So what are basically lo local tissue chemical factors? Local means at that specific location at that specific point, not generalized. For example, we have our blood vessels. Heart is pumping blood into aorta. That blood from aorta is coming into a big artery. From the artery, it is coming into the arteriole. From the arteriole, it is going into the tissue. And in the tissue, it divides into the capillaries and then venules. It forms venules and veins and then it goes back to the heart. So oxygenated blood is coming here. To the sub, it is supplied to the tissue and then it the deoxygenated blood leaves the tissue. This is just one example where if for example the demand of blood is increased. So the smooth muscles that are present in the vessels, the smooth muscles which are forming the arterioles and the venules they will more respond to the local factors the factors which are present here which are not coming from some outside these factors these venules these arterioles these capillaries are more responsive to the local factors which affect at these which affect this region they are more responsive the the bigger arteries the aorta they could be controlled with the help of nervous stimulation but the smaller venules, arterioles and capillaries, they are more out of the control of nervous st st uh, stimulation. Rather, they are more controlled. Their contraction, the smooth muscles at these points is more under the control of local factors. Examples of these local factors could be decrease in oxygen, increase in carbon dioxide, increase in hydrogen ions, adenosine and increase in temperature. These are the factors which could cause contraction or relaxation of the smooth muscles of these venules or arterioles or capillaries. So, for example, this is a tissue which needs a lot of blood, more than usual amount of blood. The, and the smooth muscles in these arterioles and venules and capillaries, they are mostly contracted. So if they are contracted, more blood cannot come. The amount of blood that is coming to this tissue will is not possible. Uh, like the more more blood cannot come in the presence of contraction of these vessels. So what will happen when the demand has increased? Some local changes will occur. Oxygen can decrease, carbon dioxide can increase, hydrogen can increase, adenosine can come or the temperature of this area can increase, there could be some other factors. These are just few examples. These changes like decrease in oxygen, increase in carbon dioxide, increase in hydrogen, 
it will cause relaxation of the smooth muscles when it causes relaxation of the smooth muscles the venules of the arterioles or the capillaries they will expand their diameter will increase and more blood will come so this is a local factor which is acting locally for example at the point at this finger level something has happened it at the finger due to which there is more demand of blood here so at this specific level there could be decrease in oxygen or increase in carbon dioxide so more blood will come because the arterioles or venules here will dilate so that will be an example of non nervous and non action potential stimulation because the muscles has relaxed but with in without the help of nervous stimulation the muscles has relaxed without the help of nervous stimulation similarly if the changes get reversed the oxygen then increase the carbon dioxide then decrease the hydrogen then the decrease the adenosine goes away and the temperature reverts back then the same changes will come again the relaxation will go away and the contraction will come back so this is one factor these are the local factors the other factor in the non nervous stimulation is the hormones there are a lot of hormones in the human body for example the norepinephrine epinephrine acetylcholine angiotensin vasopressin they can come here and they can cause contraction but they can go anywhere not specifically in the arterioles or venules because they act on the smooth muscles smooth muscles can be present in the intestines in the ureter in the bladder uh, where in a lot of viscera so wherever the smooth muscles are there they could be depending upon the type of location not all the smooth muscles at every location are affected by every factors at some point for example in the stomach those smooth smooth muscles in the stomach they will be affected more by one factor and not by the other similarly the smooth muscles in the blood vessels that will be affected by some hormones but they will not be affected by the others so but the factors are these local tissue factors and the hormones these are the non nervous factors but how these non nervous factors they cause contraction and relaxation of the smooth muscles these are this is now the mechanism we are going to explain the mechanism to cause the contraction we need depolarization but the depolarization will be caused by the non nervous factors and there is a probability that action potential will not occur we have discussed in detail in the previous factors that whenever there is change of the electrolytes across the membrane like movement of sodium potassium calcium across the membrane there is basically movement of charge sodium potassium sodium calcium and potassium they are positively charged and normally more positive charge is present on outside the membrane and less positive charge or negativity is present on inside of the membrane if positive charges move inside and positivity increase inside then the cell will become depolarized or if the positive charge moves outside or some negativity comes inside then the cell will become hyperpolarized it will not get depolarized rather it will curve it will become hyperpolarized regarding the hormones uh, i forgot to mention that the action of hormones depend upon the type of res receptor so any hormone like norepinephrine epinephrine acetylcholine angiotensin it their action depends on the type of receptors that are present for example acetylcholine can cause contraction at one receptor and the same acetylcholine can cause the receptor at this another receptor so depending upon the type of receptor the ex, the mechanism of action of acetylcholine is determined receptors for contraction will cause contraction with the help of acetylcholine receptors for relaxation will cause relaxation with the help of acetylcholine so the same hormone can cause multiple effect, uh, effects depending upon the type of receptors now coming back this depolarization this depolarization can occur with the help of movement of positive charge moving in or negative positive charge uh, uh, or negative charge uh, moving out 
Depolarization is the change in the membrane with the help of some movement of some ion. And if there is rapid change in membrane that moves along the membrane and the, this flow or this there is a chain of flow of movement of these ions along a whole membrane then that is action potential. So what these non-nervous factors like local factors and the hormones what they cause they basically can open the sodium and potassium channel and they can allow more entry of the sodium and calcium channel into the smooth muscle membrane with the opening of these channels more positive charge will come in more positive charge will come in and the outside will become negative so depolarization will occur when depolarization of the membrane has occurred calcium will be released calcium will be released and then contraction of the smooth muscle will occur so that's one way in which the known nervous factors can cause contraction of the smooth muscles these known nervous factors can also cause contraction by directly by directly stimulating by directly helping the action potential for example a nerve a, a nerve fiber is coming here and it is activating the smooth muscles and some action potential is going on then these hormones come these hormones come and they also act on these channels so these hormones will help in the action potential or the depolarization process so they can act directly or help the previously acting action potential that's another mechanism then how this repolarization or hyperpolarization will occur to cause inhibition of the smooth muscle contraction it can cause relaxation of the smooth muscle it can occur by opening of the potassium if the potassium channel is opened then it will move out similarly it can close the calcium channel and sodium channel so if no positive char charge is coming in and positive charge is moving out then the negativity will come back the negativity will come back here so the cell the smooth muscle fiber will get inhibited or the contraction will stop relaxation will occur this is one way in which non nervous factors cause depolarization or change in the potential of the membrane but these factors can also directly cause contraction without causing the depolarization so it could cause depolarization and then no depolar in the known in the case in where no depolarization occur in that mechanism the hormones or the local factors will come and they will directly act on those factors which increase the calcium without changing the potential without changing the potential they will they will secrete or increase the amount of calcium in the sarcoplasm of the smooth muscle fiber so it can come here directly it will act directly on this receptor and this receptor will will cause the release of calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum into the sarcoplasm and this increase in calcium will cause contraction there we needed the increase in membrane potential we needed depolarization the entry of sodium and potassium to cause depolarization so that depolarization can release calcium and then calcium will cause contraction of the smooth muscle but the other way is to directly release the calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum or any other organelle to increase the amount of contraction so that it can cause contraction of the smooth muscle without depolarization then how this depolarization is stopped here the sodium potassium ions are opened they help in opening so they help in depolarization if they are closed and the potassium channel is opened the potassium move out the calcium and sodium are not coming in so then hyperpolarization occurs and no depolarization occurs no contraction occurs here if they are acting directly on the calcium how this mechanism will stop this can be stopped with the help of multiple factor but one way is that hormones will act on some receptor 
they, those receptors are having on the inside of the membrane adenylate cyclase and guanylate cyclase. When the hormone binds here, this adenylate cyclase which is attached with the receptors, it will get converted into cyclic AMP or cyclic GMP. Sorry, I have written it in the reverse, the wrong way. It will become cyclic GMP and it will become cyclic AMP. This cyclic AMP or cyclic GMP, they are known as the second messenger. Then they will go and they will act on all those enzymes which are phosphorylating the enzyme in such a way like they will inhibit the contraction by acting on the phosphorylating enzymes. So when the receptors, the hormones act on the receptors which are having adenylate cyclase and guanylate cyclase, this binding of the hormone convert this adenylate cyclase into cyclic AMP and this guanylate cyclase into cyclic GMP. This cyclic AMP and cyclic GMP acting as the second messenger will stop the action of phosphorylating enzyme. And when the actions of enzymes is stopped, then there will be no contraction. The whole mechanism of action of those enzymes, how they act on the enzyme, how they stop the contraction, that is beyond the scope of this lecture. But here you must understand that they act on some receptors which help in the stopping of contractions with the help of second messengers like cyclic AMP and cyclic GMP. The other method is to act on to open some receptors here in the sarcoplasmic reticulum so that it pulls it opens to the calcium and calcium goes inside when calcium has gone inside from the sarcoplasm to the sarcoplasmic reticulum then the amount of calcium will decrease and contraction will stop and relaxation will occur another method is to open the calcium channel so that calcium moves out of the cell when the calcium moves out of the cell, the amount of calcium will decrease and when the amount of calcium decrease, contraction will stop and inhibition will occur. So these are all the, these are all the methods, these are the mechanisms with the help of which smooth muscles uh, get excited or inhibited. To summarize it, basically we have two methods. One is the nervous and the other is non-nervous, non-action potential. In the non-nervous, non-action potential, we have the local factors which could be decrease in oxygen, increase in carbon dioxide, increase in hydrogen, adenosine or increase in temperature. They act mostly in the vessels, blood vessels, at some local tissue area, at some small area. And the other is the with the help of hormones. So hormones like norepinephrine, epinephrine, acetylcholine, angiotensin, they can cause excitation. They can cause contraction as well as relaxation of the smooth muscles depending upon the type of receptors. The mechanism of action is with the help of depolarization and without depolarization. In the case of depolarization, sodium potassium, uh, sodium calcium ions channels are opened, so positive ch charge moves in depolarization occur. Similarly, if put sodium calcium channels are closed or potassium channel is open then hyperpolarization occur relaxation occur the other method is to act on the directly on the receptor which will cause release of calcium and that calcium will cause contraction mm -hmm. to stop this type of contraction we have another method in which hormone act on those receptors which activate cyclic amp cyclic gmp cyclic amp and these second messengers then stop contraction of the smooth muscles. Similarly, it can also act directly on this calcium channels. Calcium can move into the sarcoplasmic reticulum or calcium can move out of the smooth muscles and with decrease in calcium, the contraction of smooth muscle will stop. So that's all about the factors which could cause contraction or relaxation of the smooth muscles with the help of nervous stimulation and without nervous stimulation. Thanks a lot for watching the video.